So, I guess I need a little bit of time to really process my thoughts since completing the game yesterday. And I guess this video is clickbait because what I'm going to say aren't actually my first impressions. They would be like my early impressions. But if you really want to know my first impressions, like my actual first impressions, they were pretty negative. I felt so empty, dude, after I first completed this game. It was like a combination of factors, but the main reasons were that I was just beyond excited for this game and when the game didn't live up to what I wanted it to be, I just felt empty inside, you know? This was probably my most hyped game ever. I wrote like a three page script explaining what I thought after like my frustrations and stuff and like midway through I had to scrap the project because, you know, I changed my mind, you know? I, I realized I was wrong. Like I said before, you cannot accurately judge or form an opinion about a Halo game if you only played it once. Like seriously dude, I'm still changing my opinion like to this hour, you know? So yeah, this is not a review of Halo Infinite. These are just my early impressions of the game. So obviously, everybody and their dog has heard about the controversy of the multiplayer and the progression and everything else. Yes, the codings, the credits, the battle pass, the progression, everything just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. The lack of content just sucks and you know Microsoft was the one to decide this, you know. They want to make the challenges super annoying, you know, with randomizing the playlist and you can't get them done in time so you'd want to spend money. And the problem is that Microsoft and 343 do not understand a grain of how to have a Fortnite system. So yeah, they're adding new game modes next week and you know that's the backlash that's getting to Microsoft. But yeah, the gameplay and modes are just so awesome and the gameplay is just top notch. Halo Infinite has the best gameplay of any shooter probably ever, mechanically. I don't know if I like it more than Halo 5, but this is mechanically a lot better, right? Everything from the weapon sandbox to the aiming to the movement, it's just all good, you know? It's all fine-tuned to perfection and combines elements from every Halo game beforehand to create something incredible. So yeah, multiplayer. But yeah, that's it. So, let's talk about the actual part of this game that everybody, including me, waited for. Multiplayers can come and go, you know, but the campaign of the game is eternal. And personally, my most hyped part of this game. Well, to start, I think the open world is definitely what the game needed to be priced at $60, you know. The other campaigns are great, but 8 to 12 missions is just not worth $60, dude. And I'm not saying that Halo Infinite's campaign is worth $60, but still, you know. This is a lot more focused on being a standalone game with the small progression system with unlocking marines, weapons, vehicles, also upgrading your abilities, and of course being able to explore the open world. Which, the open world, dude, is just absolute class and I love it, dude. Sure, it could have had more than one biome, and sure, there isn't a lot of interactable wildlife and stuff, but... At the end of the day, you're exploring Zeta Halo in a Halo game. This is just so awesome and a great addition to the to Halo as a series, you know? Everybody has been waiting for this since the second level of Comet Evolved, and it's just exactly what they needed to do. The level design is where Halo Infinite shines in the campaign. It might be too early to say this, but when it comes down to pure level design, enemy design, and sandbox design, this could be the best Halo campaign ever. One of the best FPS campaigns ever. I don't think it beats Halo 1, but I'll just have to replay the game more. It just came out, you know? But yeah, I don't want to spend too long, but this is just such a good campaign with its levels. And the gameplay is super good with all these micro decisions being made in your head. It's the best type of shooter, really. I will say that I think the Sentinels could have been used more and they could have attacked the Banished, but you know, it's fine. Maybe more variety with them. Like in Halo 2, he had, you had the big Sentinels and stuff, but yeah, this is a great mix of like, not only weapons, but like qu equipment now and movement and decision. It's the enemies also, Very, a lot of strategy when it comes to them. But yeah, man, unreal glow up from 343 coming off Halo 4 and 5, bro. Just insane. Now, something else to appreciate is the art style. The foreigner aesthetic looks really good in this game. And can we just appreciate that for the first time in 13 years, we finally see other colors that aren't just gray for in the foreigner aesthetic. It looks so good, bro. And 
Also the Zeta Halo history told by some of these visuals, stuff like the Silexes, ancient humanity structures, foreigner systems. It is all so cool and something that really fascinates me. You know, that's one of my favorite things about the Halo universe, you know, the foreigners. The Banished looks super cool and clean and it's just a treat to fight them, you know. Everything in this game is distinct and doesn't blend together. The graphics are not the best I've ever seen, but like the act man says, Halo isn't supposed to look realistic 8K. It is supposed to look cool. And yeah, man, I couldn't, I couldn't have said it better myself. This is probably like one of the best art styles ever. Now, surprisingly, I actually do have some complaints. The game just doesn't too, feel too halo to me. That's partly because of the music, but which I think was pretty misplaced throughout the game. In my opinion, when you have a story like this, I would rather you just embrace Halo than trying to go all logic all the time, you know? Because this story isn't perfect, okay? There are some inconsistencies, or at least right now I think that. But like I, like I remember, I was like three-fourths through the game and the Halo theme just started playing and I was like, bro, sick dude. But that's my problem. They, they used a bunch of bland tracks instead of just embracing the ones that already existed, you know? It mostly lies in the soundtrack, but yeah, man, like I didn't even hear Walk in the Woods or Undercover, N Undercover Night once, bro, I'm like, what? Also in the end, we're in the silent auditorium where it's falling down. I remember being like, where's the Warthog, bro? Where's the Warthog, bro? Nah, they just jumped into a portal and like, yeah, just escaped like that. But, you know, I guess it makes sense, but you know, they should have gone all out with the Halo stuff, you know? Like, seriously, bro, but yeah. Also, can we talk about the sickest freaking boss fights, bro? I'll talk about the villains themselves later, but holy crap, dude, these bosses are just goats, you know? Halo has always had trouble with boss fights in the past, so to say I'm impressed would be an understatement, a massive one, dude. They are just so natural and fun to fight, and they each have their own unique style. My favorite boss is definitely Blade Master, dude. It was like playing Five Nights at Freddy's and Halo at the same time with the use of sound cues and technique, you know? These bosses are just so cool, and I would love to see this idea expanded upon in the future, you know, or campaign to whatever. So now, we arrive to my most controversial part of this game, the story. Now, considering how much my opinion has changed since, like, the day I completed it, which was like two days ago, I think, I'm not gonna say too much, but I do have things to say. Now, I originally was really disappointed with the story, and that led me to have, like, a as existential crisis or whatever because i had to wait like three years for this game and i was gonna have to wait like another three for a chance at more but but now i do think it is a good story it has a good combination of characterization for master chief and really cool foreigner storylines and concepts that fuel this story dude that's probably like my saving grace you know or not saving grace because i, I do like the story but y you know whatever like seriously dude the legendary ending in this game is my favorite to any Halo game ever. It is just incredible, bro. It is worth playing legendary to just watch this ending, dude. Like, before, Atriox was just a leader, but after that, holy crap, bro. He could have the potential to be the best Halo villain ever. Like, Jesus Christ. However, I do have problems. Like, I feel Brohammer doesn't really have a solid place in the story, or at least one that makes sense. I didn't really buy on why Chief would be so motivated to keep him from, like, going home. Like, bro, he's not even a Marine, so, like, why don't you just get an actual Marine to pilot the Pelican, you know? He also kind of wants to just go home the entire game to see his family, and is only relieved when Master Chief says that they're almost done with the fight, so, yeah, whatever, I don't know. My actual problem is the weapon. She was okay at first, but she kind of ruins the awe of the foreigner structures because the game treats you like you're taking her on a ride you know to see these things like no kid i want to see this new world in the foreigners that i love so much you know i waited six years like seriously there was a part where i found one of those halo 2 drop holes like from the sacred icon mission and i was ready to cry and fall down the thing but while i was falling down the thing dude she started screaming and being like woohoo like dude so annoying bro like also when chief fails to delete her when she almost gets captured and they have like that little drama she just bitches and moans in your ear during combat and it's like dude shut the freak up bro one part where you're fighting the back the backup monitor and the sentinels back him up and she's like look chief 
He brought friends. See, he has friends. Like, bro, seriously, like, what is this passive aggressive? Like, do we really need to have her talking? Like, come on, bro. But yeah, those criticisms, you know, they're just there. I, I don't know. I'm not really too, like, strong about them, but, you know, I, I, I thought I'd just point them out. My actual biggest problems with the game is the super bad animations and the cutscenes that sometimes almost ruin the mood. And I guess it is a combination of how, like, I would imagine others perceiving it. Like, I don't think I care that much, but still, like, when Brohammer was crying, but his character model didn't even try to be animated in a way where you could believe that he was crying, it's weird because you have this biggest tech company in the world, Microsoft, backing you up, and you're failing for these mistakes. But yeah, my other, my other big problem is how Cortana is just evil from Halo 5 to the point where it was universally agreed that the real Cortana died in Halo 4, and that Halo 5 Cortana was just the fragments that were left over from Cortana's rampancy. Well, I guess Halo Infinite doesn't fully deny that, but the game treats her like real Cortana. And yeah, that's gay, dude. Like, I did feel it when Cortana was gone forever at the end, but I wish that was the feeling that I got while playing Halo 4 because, God, I discovered... Like, obviously, I played Halo 4 after 5, but, you know, whatever, dude. But, like, in, like yeah, man, like, in Halo 4, dude, it was really well done. And I hate how the game puts so much focus on the weapon with Chief holding her out, even in his most emotional w moments. Like, dude, put her away, bro. She's not the focus, dude. But yeah, man, the more I think about it, the less I hate it. Like, the, the less I hate the campaign, the more I appreciate it. So this is why this isn't a review, bro, because my opinion might be totally different tomorrow. You know, it's changing every five seconds. Uh, it will take time for me to truly understand this campaign and story. You know, I kind of have to grow with it, you know. That's why I was able to make the other games reviews because, you know, I've had those games for so long, you know. Like yesterday, I was considering not even putting this game on the game of the year list. And now, now, dude, yeah, it's going to be on the list. But like, yeah, the villains, as, as I was going to talk about before, um, I was going to say that they didn't seem as fleshed out to me. But, you know, not every game has to ha have like the focus of Halo 2, you know. And everything is made up with Atriox, bro. Holy crap, dude. That legendary ending. But yeah. Uh, when I review the game, I will make sure to fully understand it. And by that time, I will make sure to put all of my effort into it, you know, and kind of burnt out. But for now, these were my thoughts. Also, I will say the normal and the normal ending, like before the credits, that absolutely sucks, bro. And that <laughs> that is not how the game should have ended, right? Like that ending is why I felt like borderline depressed when the game ended. But yeah, man, those were my thoughts, all right, or my first impressions, I should say. Uh, this is kind of just like a, you know, a landmark video, so I can look back on it. But yeah, man. I'm going to start consistently uploading more and yeah, guys, see you in the next video coming hopefully soon.